just in response to a number of the discussions that have gone on today, and I'll make a couple of points. Um, Public-private partnerships really are a way to try to achieve a couple of goals. One is to drive more capital to be available for uh, roads in the state. Second is to achieve an attractive cost of capital. Also, it's about shifting risk to the private sector. Um, and also, at the same time, maintaining controls within certain parameters by the public sector. I, I'll walk through these very quickly. I also would like to address the issue of inflation and inflation indexing, as uh, you so uh, eloquently questioned. Um, in terms of the cost of capital, it is true that the public sector can borrow today at around 4.5%. That is a very attractive way to fund. Uh, and really, public entities right now can do pay-as-you-go funding through taxation or through tolls. They can borrow in the tax-exempt market. Public-private partnerships are a third option. There's actually, you get in a tax-exempt bond financing a subsidy from the federal government that says, uh, look, you can take a tax exemption on the interest on your bonds. There are actually two tax subsidies that are available uh, on the part of a public-private partnership. First, uh, the private entity can deduct their cost of borrowing in the debt markets. So while their nominal cost of borrowing might be six, their after-tax cost is around four, less than a tax exempt bond. So their financing costs are actually lower on that front. Also, there is the ability, if properly structured, and Mr. Enright uh, dealt with this, to take depreciation on the road. That also reduces the cost of capital. If you look at a tax exempt borrowing at four and a half, versus funding through this vehicle, the cost of capital is, is sometimes lower, often the same. So I do not believe that there is a more, there's a more expensive cost of capital related to these transactions. Secondly, there's more capital that can be delivered. Uh, in borrowing in the debt markets, there is a limit on what you can borrow, and the debt investors will put a cap on what you can borrow. We are in a public part of partnerships. What's happening is the private entity is not only borrowing the debt markets like you would in the taxes on debt markets, but they're also putting in equity capital, their own money at risk to maximize the dollars that can be delivered. We looked at this for the Chicago Skyway, and just so you have the perspective, a lot of discussion of the Chicago Skyway and Indiana Toll Road. Uh, I personally worked on both of those transactions on behalf of the governmental body. We thought about, for the Chicago Skyway, how much money could be delivered today for the city of Chicago's uh, needs if they borrowed in the tax exempt market. The number was $800 million. They ended up getting a billion eight, so more than double the money. And that was because investors were willing to put money in the road, take risk in terms of, of what the future uh, uh, would bring. <laughs> the other aspect of this is shifting risk to the private sector. And uh, really, what's going to happen in the future, there's a lot of question marks in terms of where toll rates will go, what will traffic be, what will operating expenses be, construction risk. In the last two years, construction inflation has been over 12%, so it costs you 25% more today to build a road than it did two, three years ago. That's all risk that's being shifted to the private sector and out of, out of the public's hands uh, to the public's benefit. Let me just address one or two other quick uh, quick things. First of all, the concept of having inflation indexation is similar to the concept that, as I understand it, the Texas legislature is considering by indexing uh, the motor fuel tax. The idea is that costs do go up, and you need to have an inflation <coughs> index to keep up with those costs, whether it's construction costs and maintenance costs or the like. And it is a very logical thing to do. The idea of indexing toll rates is exactly that. Costs for whoever is operating the asset are going to go up, whether those be operating expenses, maintenance expenses, or construction or reconstruction of the road. So it is, uh, everybody can have a different point of view, but it can be uh, perceived as being quite fair to allow compensation for inflation for operating expenses and capital expenses over time. All, in all of this, uh, one of the big issues that, that folks focus on, they think that this is a sale of the asset, there's not going to be control of it, and that is not the case. These are truly public-private partnerships where ultimately the governmental body does have, the per sets the parameters by which these, these assets are going to be built, operated, 
and what types of returns will be achieved over time. One thing that was not mentioned is in the agreement for 121, as an example, there are limits on the types of returns that ultimately the private sector can get, and if those returns start uh, to be significant, there is a sharing of those returns with uh, the state. So uh, there's a number of controls that the public sector continues to maintain in these transactions that are very, very important. It is a partnership. The government will have control within the parameters of the contract that it puts together. So I think just in conclusion, uh, public-private partnerships, we believe, can deliver, if properly constructed, an attractive cost of capital, can deliver more capital than what's available through pay-as-you-go or through the municipal bond markets. There is significant shifting of risk to the private sector and ultimately the public sector through the agreement has parameters and controls over how the transactions work. We do not believe that these are the panacea. Uh, there are several options that TxDOT and the state of Texas have to uh, achieve the goals in the local municipalities. That is status quo, taxes, tolls, debt financing. Those are all available vehicles uh, that TxDOT, frankly, is using all of those today. Uh, but in addition to that, public-private partnerships are another tool that can be utilized. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir, we have some questions. Senator Shackler. Mr. Ford, do you have a computer with you? Uh, not, not, not handy. OK, we can get you one. Certainly. What I want to do is I want to you take the contract, make some assumptions on a 10-year average, and get us a side-by-side. -side. Happy to do so. Can we get it by one? I'll look at the numbers and do my best to achieve that goal. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, and I want to see if I understand your testimony. The risks, there's several. One is the cost of construction, concrete, is that being in China, fuel costs around the world, etc. And the other risk is the cost of capital in uncertain markets going into the future. Plus, over time, uh, operating expenses can go up, or as you put capital in the road over time, um, that, that those costs can go up. In addition, what is really going to be the traffic on the road? And, and there's risk to that as well. Okay. Um, if you could work on this, we'd like to see what it looks like. I'd like to see what your assumptions are and where the money is flowing and to what entity. I think uh, the gentleman before you was talking about money going to TxDOT. TxDOT is us. It's the highway department. And if we've got a problem with the highway department, let's fix the highway department. But ultimately, having money come out of tolls to build more roads, I think, is a concept that um, has worked in Dallas and Houston as long as it keeps going to build roads. So what I want to understand is where the money is flowing and the contract is about to get uh, needed, if you could. Thank you. Let me recognize Senator Shackle. Let me recognize Chairman Williams.